Travel continues. Justin Bogie is a senior analyst at the Heritage Foundation studying fiscal affairs, joins us this morning to discuss this number. It's 22 trillion, 59 billion, 195 million and counting. That's the current U.S. national debt. Justin Bogie, uh, put that number in perspective. Well, it's, it's as you just mentioned, it, just reading it out, it's a laborious number to even get through. It's a, it's a huge number. Uh, to put that in perspective, if we divided it amongst every person in the U.S., uh, they'd already have about a $67,000 share of the national debt. Um, over the next 10 years, that's expected to climb by about another $30,000 per person. So it's really a huge number. It's, it's overwhelming for a lot of people to even think about. Uh, most families certainly couldn't sustain $100,000 in debt, I don't think. Uh, so it's a question of how does the U.S. government do that? And before we answer that question, how do we get here? Well, you know, I think it's a, a lot of factors. Um, obviously, over the last 10 years or so, debt's really climbed. It's, it's climbed by $10 trillion. Uh, some of that has to do with the stimulus packages that were passed under uh, President Bush, President Obama. Um, we've had the, the Budget Control Act caps in place, but we've had several deals to amend those, and that's increased spending by you know, hundreds of billions of dollars. Uh, a large amount of emergency uh, and disaster-related spending, that's added on several hundred billion more. Uh, so really a lot of factors going into that. What was it at the end of the Obama administration, and, and how much has it uh, gone up since the start uh, of the Trump administration? I believe it's gone up by about $2 trillion so far in the first couple of years of the uh, Trump administration. So two usual ways to uh, reduce the debt uh, to uh, decrease spending in the future mm -hmm. or to raise revenues to, to right. reduce the debt. Uh, where do you fall? Uh, is it a mix? Well, is it one or the other? Uh, you know, I, I certainly think that uh, this problem is being driven by, by spending. So I don't think increasing taxes are really going to fix the problem. Uh, revenues are basically at the historical average, but spending is well above the historical average. And that's being driven by three things, mainly Social Security, Medicaid, Medicare. And then you also have interest on the national debt. You know, 22 trillion is a huge number. So when you start paying uh, interest on that, then uh, you're obviously going to see a large amount of money going to that. And in fact, uh, just within the next five years or, go or so, the country is projected to spend more money on interest on the national debt than national defense. So that's something that should alarm everyone. It becomes a, uh, a national security issue. In terms of reducing spending, remind us what the budget caps are and uh, what happens later this year for the, yeah. the next budget year. And so just to clarify, you know, the federal budget last year was about $4.1 trillion. Uh, the budget caps only really covered the discretionary part of that, which is about a third of the federal budget. Um, so you're not talking about a whole lot of money. It's about $1.1 uh, is the cap next year. Um, but we had these, this last big budget deal that increased spending by about $300 billion over two years. And now we're kind of setting up for a, for a cliff where spending would fall by $125 billion next year if it reverted back to the uh, Budget Control Act cap. And about $71 billion of that would go to national defense. So, uh, you know, there's already talk of a budget deal or, or some way to uh, increase at least defense spending, maybe uh, non-defense spending as well. Explain what the Overseas Contingency Operations Fund is and how that plays into this. So this is really something that evolved after 9-11. Uh, it was originally designated as emergency spending, but it was really to respond to that, the efforts in Iraq and Afghanistan, um, you know, after 9-11. Um, what it's turned into is, you know, we, we do still have some ongoing war efforts uh, across the globe, um, but increasingly this, this overseas contingency operations account, it's not capped by the, by the budget caps. It's, it's kind of an unrestrained uh, pot of money. Uh, it's been increasingly used to support the base Department of Defense and Department of State budget instead of really going for those conflicts overseas like it was intended to. Are discretionary budget caps enough in your mind to start bringing down that massive number that we'll come back to well, throughout the segment? In the short term, it's important, I think, to uh, control the growth of discretionary spending. Uh, but no, it's, it's not enough to ever, you, you could, in, within a few years, you could get rid of the entire discretionary budget. And because of interest and uh, Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, we would still be consuming all revenues. We would still run a budget deficit. So uh, you're not going to get there on discretionary budget alone. How do we get there? Well, again, I think it's uh, you have to focus on what's really driving the debt, and that's these these huge programs: Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid. Uh, they're they're on a path to insolvency right now. Before too long, they're uh, they're already taking in uh, less revenue than they're than they're paying out. They still have some reserve funds built up, uh, but eventually they're going to start running a deficit. Uh, benefits are already on track to to go down. Um, so until you make those programs more sustainable, find ways to lower health care costs. Uh, 
then it's going to be hard to ever balance the budget. Do, is any of that happening in Congress right now? No, and, and that's another alarming thing. You know, this $22 trillion number, uh, certainly amongst us budget geeks, it kind of made an impression, but nobody in, in Congress is really talking about it. Nobody seems Why not? alarmed by it. Well, the, the debt doesn't mean anything anymore, unfortunately, at least the last few years. We've, we've gotten to the point where instead of having a statutory debt limit, uh, Congress passes these debt limit suspensions. And when you have a suspension, it basically just allows Congress to borrow as much as it wants to and, until that date certain when it, when it runs out. We're about to run out again on March 1st. Um, but we need to get more serious about the debt limit. We need to have a number in place. If we're going to raise the debt limit, then it needs to be accompanied by spending cuts or, or at least some way to, to offset that increase. 